Hash sets are a very underrated, very enigmatic data structure. I'm sure if you've been in C Sharp for any length of time, you have seen the hash set in documentation somewhere. And it gets even worse. The mysteriousness of the hash set gets even more complicated because when you go on Stack Overflow, people tell you things like, it's good for not having duplicates, which is absolutely true. I am not going to dispute that fact, but the real reason that we use hash sets is because searching is very expensive in a traditional list or in an array. And it kind of just makes sense. If we look at this list right here and we want to find the toad in a list or an array, we're going to have to go through every single actual element not unless we use a binary search and a binary search is still going to be expensive and slow as well too so we can't really win in searching arrays in any way and also with arrays and list adding can be expensive not always but adding can be expensive as well too and hash sets are going to blow the performance of lists and arrays out of the water but you may be asking yourself well we we already have a dictionary what do we need a hash set for? And you would actually be absolutely correct. Dictionaries have the same performance of hash sets. They're incredibly fast for searching and insertion. But the thing is, is that we don't always need these key values. Look at this list of frogs or this list uh, or this array of frogs. Is it really necessary that we have both key and value? No, we just need the value. They're frogs. We don't need to have special keys for them, not unless we're going to separate them by some type of subgenus, which would be pretty cool, but we don't need it in that case. So what some genius probably did, and I don't know the exact history, I'm sure that this has been lost with time, is somebody said, gee, what if we combine the performance of a dictionary with the simplicity of a list, and thus the hash set was born? With the hash set, we could quickly add elements just like we would with a list. We just initialize, add, and we even get these handy little methods that will quickly search in O1 for us. But there is one drawback. The elements must be unique, but that's kind of the design. They're there for you to not have duplicates inside the data structure. And also, they're not good for very, very small data sets. If you just have four or five elements, once again, you just want to use a list. And this is primarily because with dictionaries and hash sets, we're trading space complexity for time complexity, i.e. a hash set and a dictionary takes up more space, but with that extra space that you take up, you do get extra speed. So let's talk about the most important part real life scenarios when you will use a hash set the first and the most common is when you need blazing fast lookups on a very large data set and hash sets are perfect for that the second biggest reason is for leak code style interview question and more specifically the check duplicates problem which is going to be the most widely asked type of question that you will probably be asked that involve hash sets. Now you may be asking yourself, and you are probably a smart little cookie, why are we going to check duplicates if a hash set is designed not to have duplicates? And you would be right asking yourself that. And that's because we are going to check duplicates within an array. And here in a second, we're going to hop inside VS Code, but hash sets are also good for finding unique elements. So that, that's enough for now. Let's go ahead, let's hop into side VS Code, and let's do the check duplicates problem from leak code. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the left here, and I'm going to create a brand new class, and I'm going to call this solution. You could actually put all this code inside the program.cs if you want to, but I'm going to separate it out inside of a solution class because I think it makes things look a little bit better. and. I'm going to copy over the boilerplate for the actual leak code question and I'll leave a link down below in case you want to look at it yourself and I'm going to say contains duplicate and within this contains duplicate method we're going to take an array in and that's pretty much our method. 
So first things first, let's solve this with the naive solution. And the naive solution is going to use a nested for loop, the dreaded nested for loop. And just remember, if you're using a nested for loop within a leak code question, things are probably not going to be optimized. So we're going to start with the non-optimized version and then we're going to optimize it with the hash set so that we can really see the hash set in all its glory. So let's go ahead and start off with this uh, nasty nested for loop. So the first thing that this we're going to make is just the most basic for loop that we possibly can. It's going to be nums.length and we're going to go ahead and increment it just like we would any other nested for any other for loop. So here's where things are going to start getting tricky. We're going to create a nested for loop here and we're going to start at the second element in the array. And that's what this I plus one actually indicates. So when we start off, we don't want to check the, we don't want to check against the first element twice. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the actual for loop so that it starts right here. And then we can begin iterating that way. And all that's going to happen is it's going to iterate like this and then it's going to start at the second element and it's going to do the same exact iteration just like this. So let's go ahead in here and we're going to say j is less than nums dot length and then we are going to increment j plus plus just like this. And within this actual nested for loop, we're just going to check if the element within the first for loop is equal to the element in the second for loop. And this is going to be incredibly easy. Incredibly easy, but very inefficient. And this is pretty much all that we're going to do and just return true. And this is going to indicate that there is indeed a duplicate element in here. And if we don't find it, we're going to return false. So let's go ahead, let's take this code right here. This is pretty much the end of the algorithm. Let's go ahead inside of leak code and let's go ahead and copy and paste it and let's check our time complexity. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go ahead, just copy and paste it in there and let's run it and let's spruce things up a little bit. This is looking a little uh, nasty right here. Then we're gonna take that over. I guess you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And let's go ahead and submit it. So when we actually submit it, watch what happens. We're going to get, we're going to be at the very bottom of the rung. We want to be up here. And if we look at the complexity of it, you're going to see it's going to be an exponential time complexity, which pretty much means that you did not pass the interview question. And we need to optimize this straight away. So the first thing that we're going to do in order to optimize this with a hash set is first we need to actually create the hash set data structure. And it is going to be a hash set full of actual numbers. And I'm just going to call this set, go ahead, new it up. And we need to get, first things first, we need to get rid of this nested for loop and we can just go ahead and get rid of it just like this. And instead of having the for loop, what we're going to have is we're going to have an if statement that's going to check if it actually is contained within the actual array. So we're going to say if it contains, and we'll go ahead here, and if it contains the actual index, and all this means right here is the actual number inside of the array. If you ever see the nums i just, just like this, just think that this is the actual value. And if you ever see the i by itself, that means it's just the index that we actually used when we created the for loop. So what are we going to do if it does contain the, the element? We're going to return true. And here's where things get very nifty. I think that this is very elegant. We're going to take our set, and if it is not within, within the actual set, we are going to add the number. So you may be asking yourself, how does this actually work? It seems a little bit too elegant. It seems almost a little bit too good to be true. All that's happening is that it's iterating through each one and it's going to go first, it's going to go to the first element and it's going to check, is it within the actual array? And if it's not within the actual array, it's going to add it. And so it's going to add one Then it's not going to find number two. So it's going to add two. So it's going, if it's not, if it doesn't find three, it's going to add three. Then on the very last element, which is indeed the duplicate, it's going to check it and if it is indeed going to find it. And that is the whole entire basis behind the check duplicates problem. So 
Let's go into here. Let's take all our code. We're pretty much done here. It's a pretty easy leak code question. And then let's go inside leak code here and let's go ahead, copy and paste it within leak code. So go into here and I'm going to move it back a little bit and let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. And what happens is now we are at the place where we exactly want to be. We were down here, which meant that our algorithm was super slow. And now it's at the very front where, where we exactly want to be. And let's go ahead. Let's analyze the time complexity. Hopefully this works. Sometimes it gives an error. And would you look at that? We are no longer in an exponential time complexity. We have linear time complexity. We have mastered the hash set congratulations anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching